Hello everyone, we are solving the general aptitude uh, section of the humanities and social sciences paper of gate examination. Let's start with the very first question and it says if this sign denotes increasing order of intensity, then the meaning of the words simmer, seep, small, smolder is, ana is analogous to break, raise and what? Which of one of the given options is appropriate to fill in the blank? The answer choices that uh, is given over here is obfuciate, obliterate, fracture and fissure. Okay. So simmer, going back to the question a bit, simmer, seep and smolder all refer to increasing levels of intensity. Okay. Simmer, if I say, it's uh, a gentle heat, like uh, like if we if we boil water on simmer mode. So means on the gentle heat mode, we are boiling water. So that's simmer. Moving over to seep or seeping, that's the second word. Seeping is a more vigorous boiling. Okay, and smolder, smolder is a slow but intense burning process okay so these are the three things going to the next part that is break raise yeah break okay let's take the word from here break i'm taking then fracture i'm taking and obliterate okay these three let us uh, talk about these three break fracture and obliterate all refer to increasing degrees of destruction okay breaking is the least severe form of destruction fracturing is a break is like breaking into pieces like bone fracture and all we know that clearly and obliterating it is to uh, it means to completely destroy okay so therefore we can say obliterate is the word that can completely uh, that can complete the analogy over here. So go with obliterate. Moving over to the next question we have. In a locality, the houses are numbered in the following way. The house numbers on one side of a road are consecutive odd integers starting from 301 while the house numbers on the other side of the road are consecutive even numbers starting from 302. The total number of houses is the same on both sides of the road. If the difference of the sum of the house numbers between the two sides of the road is 27, then the number of houses on each side of the road is now here we are asked to find out the number of houses on each side of the road. Okay. So let's call the number of houses on each side of the road as x. We can set up two, uh, two equations over here to represent the sum of the house numbers on each side of the road. Sum of odd numbers. Sum of odd numbers would be 1 plus 3 plus 5. Continuation like this. And we can take up the sum of even numbers as 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 2x. Now we are given that the difference between the sum of the odd numbers and the sum of the even numbers is 27. That's properly given over here. So we can represent this difference with uh, an equation that is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus continuation plus 2x minus 1 and putting this in bracket minus 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus continuation plus 2x is equal to 27. So we can recognize, okay, yeah, that's the equation. So now we can recognize that the sum of the odd numbers and the sum of the even numbers are arithmetic series. And what is an arithmetic series? It's a sequence of numbers where each term is equal to the previous term 
plus a constant value is there called the common difference. In this case, over here, the common difference would be 2 for both the even and the odd series. Now, to find out the sum of an arithmetic series, we can use uh, a formula that is Sn is equal to n by 2 bracket close into a plus 1. Okay. Now, Sn over here is the sum of the series. n over here is the number of terms in the series. Then, a over here is the first term in the series and 1 over here is the last term in the series. Okay. Uh, so, for the, odd, uh, for, for the sum of the odd numbers, now the sum of uh, the number of houses on each side of the road would be 5 on one side and another 5 on the other side. Okay. So, that would be the answer. Moving over to the next question, it says, which one of the given options is a possible value of x in the following sequence? Now, the sequence is 3, 7, 15, x, 63, 127, 255. Each number in the sequence is uh, obtained by multiplying the previous number by 2. Okay. And then adding 1. So, following this pattern, we can find the value of x. Now, previous number over here before x is 15, as you can see very clearly, 15 is there. x is equal to 15 into 2 by 2, we have to multiply, plus 1, okay. So, your x is equal to 30 plus 1, so x's value is 31. So, uh, 31 is the possible value of x in the sequence. The next question that we have is based on timings. On a given day, how many times will the second hand and the minute hand of the clock cross each other during the clock time that is 12.5 and 12.55 hours? Now, uh, here, in order to solve it, we need to discuss something like in an hour, the minute hand completes a full resolution that is 360 degrees. And the hour hand complete, completes 360 degrees by 12, that is 30 degrees, okay? So, every minute, the minute hand uh, moves about 360 degrees by 60, 360 by 60, which is equal to 6 degrees. So, every minute, the hour hand moves about 0.5 degrees because it completes 30 degrees in an hour so which is once again 60 minutes uh, your correct answer would be C that is 50 moving over to the next question Now, in the given text, the blanks are numbered as 1 to 4. We have to select the best match for all the blanks. Now, from the ancient Athenian arena to the modern Olympic stadiums, athletics dash the potential for a spectacle. So, we have four options in option, yeah, for option A. We have four options. Okay, so we have four options in each of the following things, in each of the following lines. Uh, I feel we should be going with D because uh, as the option says, from the ancient Athenian arena to the modern Olympic stadiums, athletics, number one, holds. Holds the potential for a spectacle. Number two, the crowd waits, waits with bated breath as the Olympian artist twists his body, stretching the javelin behind him. Twelve strides in, he begins to cross-step. Cross-steps culminate in an abrupt stop on his left foot as his body pivots like a 
door turning on a hinge, the javelin is launched skyward at a precise angle. Let's move over to the next question. Three distinct sets of indistinguishable twins are to be seated at a circular table that has eight identical chairs. Unique seating arrangements are defined by the relative positions of the people. How many unique seating arrangements are possible such that each person is sitting next to their twin? Now for uh, this one, uh, you, you will have to go with 12, okay? Let's move over to the next question. We have a chart over here and the chart given below compares the installed capacity that is MW of four power generation technologies that is T1, T2, T3 and T4 and their electricity generation that is MWH in a time of 1000 hours. So here they have given the formula which one of the given technologies has the highest capacity factor. Uh, so for this one we have four options T1, T2, T3 and T4. So for this one let's go with T1. Okay, moving over to the next question. So in this figure, in the 4 into 4 array shown below, each cell of the first three columns has neither a cross or a number as per the given table. Now the number in a cell represents the count of crosses around its immediate neighboring cells that is left, right, top, bottom, diagonals. As per this rule, the maximum number of crosses possible in the empty column is, okay, uh, it would be, I feel it would be going with two empty columns, having two more, like, uh, as per the rule, the maximum number of crosses would be, uh, I feel it would be two, yeah, go with two. Okay, let us keep it till here today in this video. If you want to solve questions like this with me, you can join our classes for that or you can follow this channel. All the details regarding our classes are given in the description box below. Thank you.